Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. For today's video we're going to be discussing all of the latest news reveals and leaks as part of of course the upcoming range for Transformers. Now today's video shall be split up into two individual segments. For the first half we're going to be discussing some of the official reveals that have come courtesy via Takaratomi and then for the second we're going to be breaking down and going through the leak listings as part of Transformers Legacy Year 2. I recently discussed the first half of Year 2, now we can discuss the second half and it's definitely looking to be super exciting so a lot to get through let's kick things off with some of the new reveals courtesy of Takara and straight off the bat we have the full reveal of Transformers Legacy Deluxe Dead End. Now we knew this guy was coming he was leaked various months ago however we only got an official image of him at San Diego Comic Con which merely showcased the robot mode. Now truth be told I thought San Diego Comic Con was a bit of a train wreck. It is undeniably one of the biggest events that happens all year round. We haven't had a San Diego Comic Con I want to say since 2019 and Hasbro merely only showed off one way from Transformers Legacy, they completely skipped Studio Series and they didn't even give us a full reveal, they completely hid all of the accessories and the vehicle modes etc. So I did think that Transformers was a bit of a flop for SDCC but at long last here we have the official reveal for Dead End and in this particular robot mode image he does look a little more strange when in comparison to that image that was revealed at San Diego Comic Con. Most noticeably would be the way the legs have been designed, now at least to me it appears as if though this guy's actually wearing high heels as he has a super thin foot and then it gradually gets thicker and thicker until it becomes this large mass at the back of the knee. I do not like the way those legs look at all. They are a massive departure when in comparison to what we saw from Drag Strip, of which this guy appears to be a heavy remold of or maybe he borrows the engineering. It does appear as if though they'll transform in a similar way. So the legs don't look great but the upper body I think looks fantastic. The head, the chest, the arms, everything about that I think comes together really nicely and granted in this other image it looks slightly better but I still just think that kibble is way way too thick where the back of the knees are but then we have an image of the vehicle mode which up until this point we really didn't know how it's going to look I think this looks fantastic it comes together to form a super solid looking alt mode I know there are some that aren't too keen on the yellow and silver strip that we have going along one side of the vehicle personally I think it adds a bit of color a bit of personality to this guy so I am glad to see it incorporated into the color deco and overall the vehicle mode looks great we do get two energon infused weapons which will attach onto the back they're very similar in terms of design to what we've seen from both Wild Rider and Drag Strip. So looking to be yet again another decent stunt card. I am hoping those legs look slightly better in hand than how they're coming across in some of these images. And probably the money shot, here we have Dead End combined onto Menasaur. Now this looks super cool. We're only one stunt con away from finishing this guy after we get Dead End. So it's actually been quite a quick combiner to finish. But as you guys can see, he will separate in the exact same way as we saw from Drag Strip. So there'll no doubt be some kind of locking mechanism that you'll have to attach the car onto the side of the arm and then split the arm and it will automatically cause the Stunticon to convert. I think it looks great. It's definitely going to thicken out some of those skeletal components of Menasaur. So looking forward to him. And uh, moving along, here we have the full reveal for Blanka, or as we know him as Point Blank. I think this guy looks really cool. He does come with his target master, that being Pinpointer. And whilst it doesn't look the greatest, I personally would have much rather had them carried over the engineering and articulation that we saw from Siege. It is a nice inclusion. Now there are so many of you guys out there that really hate this figure. When I did the initial reveal video when they showed him off to us at San Diego Comic Con, I got absolutely bashed in the comment section for saying that I was praising it too much and truth be told I can't see what's wrong with this figure. I actually really like the way the robot mode looks. I think the torso looks fantastic. It does look slightly strange where that mid skirt piece is concerned. I will be honest, you know, the way the hips just kind of stick out, it does become this thick torso and then very quickly becomes a very thin piece. But other than that, I don't think it looks that bad at all. I think the colors are amazing. The head sculpt's cool. I know that they're going for a more kind of anime s quality to that head when in comparison to traditional G1 but I do think it looks cool here we have some more dynamic shots of the character utilizing that pinpointer accessory it doesn't look the best I'm gonna be real the actual gun mode looks super tiny I do once again wish that it was either just a repackage of one of the old target masters that we saw for siege but it's looking to be a decent figure here we have an image of the alternate mode which I think looks fantastic I love the way this thing looks I think the colors super vibrant super electric especially when it comes to that blue so definitely looking forward to this guy and another reveal that we got and was one that I don't think any of us saw coming is a Canon camera and Transformers collaboration which is Optimus Prime that 
turns into a cannon camera. Now granted the robot mode does look slightly strange as you would expect. He basically does have a massive camera lens slap bang in the center of the chest but it is a cool idea. It's definitely very unique. I do like how the matrix of leadership is actually embedded within the lens. I think that's a nice attention to detail. I really think that it's going to come down to the novelty aspect for this particular collaborative piece as when we take a look at the cannon alt mode. My goodness this thing looks awesome. It really does look like a one-to-one -one scale replica of a proper cannon. They've done a fantastic job. Obviously they've got the proper license so they had to match this as close to a real life cannon as possible and I think as far as the alt mode is concerned it looks terrific. Even as we take a look at the back of the camera we've got all of the various different dials, the buttons, the lens, everything about it. I just think it looks really cool and it's awesome that you can actually remove the lens from the camera itself which I just think is a really nice touch. So I'm definitely going to be picking it up. Now here we have a teaser image on one half I imagine it is the Canon Camera Optimus and on the other half I can't quite work out what that is. I initially thought that maybe it was a sinister version of Megatron but the head design really does remind me of Jetfire so are we going to be seeing yet again another reissue of the Siege Jetfire maybe with an alternate head sculpt? I guess we'll just have to wait and see and then one of the final big reveals that they dropped was one that should have truth be told been released way over two years ago. It is a Masterpiece 10 Starscream this time fully decoed in the Revenge of the Fallen slash Dark the Moon color scheme. Now this color scheme is a fan favorite, it's my preferred look for the character, but Hasbro have just taken their damn sweet time getting this out to us and I'm almost certain that for those who wanted this kind of color deco, you've more than likely picked up the KO, so it is a shame that they did take as long as they did to release this guy, considering we're seeing this ROTF star screen will no doubt get a DOTM recolor off Ratchet, but I just think it's too little too late. The robot mode looks decent, they don't have appeared to have made any refinements to the mold, so he still has the massive butt kibble, Sadly, he has no articulation where the shoulders are concerned, something which the DNA design kit actually fixed. So I do think it's slightly lazy and it definitely should have come out a long, long time ago. Here we have an image of the jet mode. It looks nice enough. The tattoo detail looks great, but we've seen it done by KO companies and dare I say, seen it done a little better. Now we turn to some of the non-official reveals. Now these are basically just leaked listings, but as I've mentioned so many times over on the channel, these are more than likely exactly what we can expect for next year. And they're super exciting. So to kickstart things off, this listing does include a Legacy Core Class Nemesis Prime, which will no doubt be the Kingdom Core Optimus redecoed in a black and silver color deco, which, yeah, that's cool enough. But we're actually going to be seeing a Core Class Grimlock. Now, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I believe I discussed that in the first leak listings that we got for next year, there were other Core Class Dinobots. So it does appear as if though they're going to be giving us the full team of G1 Dinobots in the Core Class, which I think is fantastic. I'm really excited to see as to how those guys actually translate translate into a much smaller scale, especially considering that their leader class counterparts are phenomenal. We're also expecting to see a core class bomb burst, which apparently is an Energon monster package refresh. I have no idea as to what this could be at all. Bomb burst, it doesn't ring any type of bells for me, but I guess it sounds kind of cool. We're also expecting to see a core class swoop. So once again, more of our Dinobots, which is really interesting. A repack core class Starscream, a core class Scar, which is really interesting. A Scar is a minion of Double Dealer, the figure that we saw released as part of the Earthrise toy line, and I actually believe we got a Scar in a Generation Select box set, but this is going to be a proper core class figure, so I am excited to see as to how this guy is going to turn out. Will it be a retool of the upcoming Studio Series Rumble slash Frenzy? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. We're also expecting to see a core class Dinobot Snarl, so definitely giving us our Dinobots in that core scale thick and fast, and then we turn to some of the deluxe figures, and one of the most exciting ones is a deluxe class Shrap so this confirms that Hasbro will be giving us a full set of those iconic Insecticons. We saw Kickback with the first wave of Legacy. Some of us weren't too sure whether or not we'd be seeing more of them. But yeah, we're going to be seeing Shrapnel, so that's super cool. Bombshell will no doubt be on the horizon as well. We're also expecting to see a Deluxe Class Prowl. I'm hoping it's the G1 version of Prowl, as we've recently just seen the Studio Series 86 Ironhide. So it would also be good to get a new version of Prowl, one that isn't an exclusive. So that's quite cool. A Deluxe Class Cross cut which sounds nice enough definitely a welcome addition to the collection a deluxe class junkie on now this is deluxe junkie on two there is a deluxe junkie on one so we're going to be seeing two junkie on releases back to back in wave one or wave two and three so that's exciting so two junkie on releases are rumored to be a part of those deluxe assortments for transformers legacy year two a voyager nemesis leo now we knew leo prime was on the horizon so this is more than likely just going to be a repaint of that figure a voyager ramjet package refresh now this is exciting, Ramjet was an exclusive figure to the Seeker 
pack that we saw released as part of Earthrise, one of the most elusive, hardest to track down, and most expensive two packs on the aftermarket. And now Hasbro are going to be releasing them individually. That's awesome for those of you who were unable to pick up the original set. So that's really cool. I hope we can see reissues for Thrust and of course for Dirge. That'd be really cool to see. We're also going to be expecting a Voyager class Junkion. So, so many Junkions as part of Transformers Legacy. I'm quite surprised that we're not seeing them in Transformers Studio Series, but I guess they're going to be jam packed with Rise of the Beast figures next year. And then the final and undeniably the most exciting leak listing we have for the Voyager class and it's actually quite a surprising one as I did kind of hint it when we took a look at the deluxe skull grin it's going to be a Voyager class bludgeon now when we saw skull grin I actually said that that would be a great basis for them to give us a bludgeon I was completely speculating I didn't think that we'd actually see bludgeon in the main line but the fact that he's not going to be a deluxe and a Voyager is super super interesting I am hoping that he is a brand new mold and not simply a repaint and this is like the first bludgeon we've seen since I want to say that hunt for the Decepticons version years back so really exciting stuff. Transformers Legacy sounds as if though it's going to kick ass next year. We've got Rise of the Beast, we've got Studio Series, we've got Transformers All Sparks, so many things going on. Really exciting stuff. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below in regards to some of these leaks as well as the official reveals by Takara Tomi, which excites you the most. And as always, I thank you all so much for watching. Until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.